My cousin, the one person I was closest to on this entire planet, went to embarrass me at a wedding. I didn't expect him to stand up and tell everybody I'm pregnant at the age of 17, which my family is completely against. I know I'm going ahead of myself. Let me start from the beginning and tell you exactly how I ended up here. Sometimes it's the one closest to you that'll end up hurting you the most. And it'll be all your fault because you yourself handed them all the tools they needed to hurt you. Hey guys, before I start telling you about the absolute mess that I'm in right now, it's best that I explain a little drama from my teen years that started all of this. It's very important for this entire post because there's so much to explain and without it, things could be a bit hard to understand. When I was 17, I was dating the one guy in high school who was named Jack. He was sort of a jerk and didn't really care about me that much now that I think about it, but hey. You know, as a teenager, I used to think that Jack was absolutely head over heels for me. Then an accident happened and it left me wondering if I was really so unworthy of his attention that leaving me was like breathing to him. We've been dating for almost 10 months at this point and throughout those 10 years my friend has told me to break up with him multiple times but I would always tell them that they had him all wrong and that he wasn't actually all that bad. The only person I would let in on all my secrets was my cousin, Mark. Mark is my mom's sister's son, and he and I have always been super close before everything turned into a big mess. This was mainly because he was only a year older than me, and we were in the same grade, which meant that we had the same group of friends, the same social life, and we were able to be blood-related, so we'd always be together. I mean, there wasn't a single moment that we would be out of the house and not be together. If somebody asked anyone where one was, the person would tell them to ask the other. That's how close that we actually were. How close were we before he broke my trust so badly that I had to flee the city to be away from all the shame and all the guilt that I was feeling around all my family? Yeah, it's that bad. So, I come from a very traditional conservative family. This means that anything a normal teenager be to be doing without worrying about anything. I had to think twice about it. When I was a kid, my parents did not even let me talk to the guys in my grade. If they found out that I had guy friends, they'd get really mad and just ensure that I would not be friends with them anymore or else there would be dire consequences. They didn't let me go out with friends, have fun at parties, or do any of the things that normal teenagers experience. The only guy they ever let me hang out with was Mark, because he's my cousin, and they trusted me to behave around him. The thing was, Mark disgraced uh, with their way of parenting just as much as I did. He disagreed with it, which meant that he made sure I experienced everything that a normal teenager would. I went to parties, I went out on dates, and I did everything while my parents thought I was hanging out with Mark. That's also how I was able to date Jack for almost 10 months. It was hard trying to hide it from my parents, but it was easier because I had the support of somebody from the family who helped me sneak out. That was until things got out of hand, and we saw ourselves in a situation that was really hard to get out of. Basically, I got pregnant as a 17-year-old. I mean, obviously, we didn't try for this or plan it. Jack didn't even want the baby. Finding out I was pregnant was the most terrifying moment of my life. I was only 17, still in high school, and the idea of telling my family seemed impossible. They had such high expectations for me, and I couldn't bear the thoughts of their disappointment, so... I did the only thing that I could think of. I hid it. My cousin Mark was the first person I told. When I broke down and told him everything, he did not judge me. Instead, he hugged me and said that we would figure this out together. So, guys, we hatched a plan. I would crash at Mark's place on weekends and holidays to keep my bump under wraps. And during the week, I did my best to act nonchalantly, but trust me, it was not easy. He would take me to doctor appointments, make sure that I was eating right, and even read up on pregnancy stuff to help me out. Then my cousin, uh, Sarah's wedding happened, Mark and I had this whole plan working out. I wore this flowery dress to hide the bump and Mark was my designated wingman ready to swoop in if things got messy. I'm not sure if I mentioned this to you guys, but Mark has always been the family a self-appointed comedian. He got this knack for turning any situation into a punchline. Which is usually pretty hilarious, but let me tell you, this time he took it a step too far. So, Mark gets up to give his speech, and at first, everything seems normal. 
He's cracking jokes, telling embarrassing stories about Sarah growing up. You know, the usual wedding stuff. But then out of nowhere, he drops this bomb. With a mischievous twinkle in his eyes, Mark tells Sarah that there's something else that he needs to congratulate her on. And then he points straight to me, revealing to everyone in the room that I'm going to be a mommy. You could have heard a pin drop, I swear. The entire room went silent like somebody had shucked all the air out of it. I felt like I was going to pass out right then and there. And then chaos erupted, people started whispering, exchanging shocked looks, and I swear I even heard somebody gasp. It was like I was watching a train wreck in slow motion, unable to look away no matter how much I wanted, just to knowing that the train that was wrecking was my life. To say I was mortified would be the understatement of the century. I wanted to crawl under the nearest table and disappear forever. Before I could even catch my breath, my parents filled the room with their voices, sharp and angry. They're a fighting right there in the middle of my cousin Sarah's wedding reception. They're yelling at each other and they're starting to yell at me, calling me all sorts of names and saying I'm a disgrace. My mom's crying, my dad's shouting, and I'm just standing there feeling like the world's biggest screw-up. All because the cousin I trusted the most could not keep his mouth shut. Needless to say, I was so mad at Mark, absolutely livid. So there we were, and I was giving Mark a piece of my mind. But instead of owning up to his mistake or showing any sign of remorse, Mark just stood there with this smug look on his face. It was like he didn't even care that he had caused me such pain. I tried to reason with him to make him understand how much he had hurt me, but it was like talking to a brick wall. He was stubborn, he was arrogant, refusing to take responsibility for the action. And you want to know the worst part? He didn't even try to defend himself. I mean, he just brushed it off like it was no big deal, like I was the one overreacting. At that moment, I realized just how toxic our relationship had become. Mark was not the supportive cousin I thought he was. He was just a selfish jerk who only cared about himself. And as much as it hurt, I knew that I could not just keep letting him walk all over me like this. I deserved better than somebody who was willing to throw me under the bus for a cheap laugh and a short-lived attention. He was clearly enjoying the way everybody was coming up to him asking about details of the pregnancy and how I was dealing with it. But I knew what I had to do right then and there. After the chaos of Sarah's wedding and the fallout with Mark, I knew I needed a fresh start. So I made a decision. I was going to move out of town far away from the drama and start a new life of my own. It was not an easy decision, per se. But, you know, I had been saving money from my part-time job for a while and was confident I had enough to make it work. I decided to go and do it alone, so I packed up my belongings and headed out with a heavy heart. The journey was stressful, to say the least, and... Moving to a new town by myself was challenging, especially with a baby on the way. It was worse because my family was so conservative that they didn't even try to reach out. They genuinely thought that every bad thing that was happening to me was a punishment from God, and they could not interfere in it. But I knew I needed to do it for my own mental health, as well as for my baby's future. I could not let the baby grow up around relatives who cursed her and her mom's existence as soon as they found out that she was conceived. I'd moved out of town ten years ago, intent on becoming a fresh life away from the chaos and the pain of the past. And let me tell you, those years were not easy. But with hard work, determination, and a little luck, I was able to create a successful business from the ground up. It was difficult to balance the motherhood and entrepreneurship, but every light night and every early morning was worthwhile to see my dreams come true. Then something very unexpected happened. Very unexpected. I received a great business opportunity in my hometown. One of my clients insisted a lot that I personally visit and test the water before discussing the business potential. I won't bore you with the technical details, but it was a huge opportunity one which would take my business to a new height. However, even so, I was conflicted about whether or not to go back to the city. I had run away from all those years ago, and that was until I was contacted by my uncle, informing me my parents' death and inviting me to their funeral. It came to me as a huge shock, but a hurt one. You know, it hurt a lot, but not as much as one would expect. I guess the distance over the years loosened the attachment I had for them. Nonetheless, I decided to go pay my respects. No matter how they were or how they treated me, they were my parents. So I returned with my daughter, not as a helpless little girl, but as a successful woman, who literally had achieved all her dreams on her own. 
I attended the funeral, and sure enough, there were still family members and relatives whispering about me behind my back, but I hardly cared anymore. After that, I left and started my market research. Guys, now, here goes the, uh, I don't know, somewhat interesting part. Soon enough, Mark learned that I was in town. I remembered not seeing him at the funeral and wondered how his relationship would have been with my parents over the years that I was not present. One thing that was sure, he had not changed one bit. He was still the same selfish, conceited little jerk who cared about nobody except himself. One day, he called me. Only God knows how he found out my number. Can you guess the first thing that he said to me? I want your help with my business. Can you believe it? This man has not seen me for a decade, and because of him, I had to leave my town at the age of 17, and I had to go through the whole pregnancy alone. And would I have not heard him say anything, no, I'm sorry, or nothing like that? When I asked him about it, he simply said that it was a year ago, and we both were young and stupid, and didn't people know better, and how I should just let it go. The audacity. But after a while, he apologized with a somber tone and said that he really needs my help and that I was his last hope. I simply told him that I need time to think about it and hung up. Now, guys, I'm confused as to what exactly I should do. On the one hand, I want to help him. He's family after all, and helping each other is what families do. This could be very well my chance at closure. But on the other hand, I can't forget what he did to me all those years ago. What do you guys think? Should I let him in and give him a chance? Just to redeem himself, or should I tell him to kick rocks? Update number one. Hey guys, it's me. I am here for an update, so let's get right into it. But now, uh, I've reached a whole new level of crazy. Mark showed up at my door a week later asking for help with this business again. I knew if he wanted my help, he was going to be persistent, but I was not expecting him to be annoying. I guess he really was going through a tough time. I told him straight up that I had not forgiven him. The betrayal from the wedding and still stings and I was not about to pretend everything was just okay. I needed him to know that, well, what he did was not something that I could easily just get over. I thought that being honest would help us have a real conversation about the past, but Mark did not take it well at all. We ended up having a huge fight. Mark kept pushing me, saying that I was holding on to grudges and that it was time to let go. He acted like his actions at the wedding were no big deal, just a joke that I went too far. But it was not a joke to me. It was public humiliation that changed my life. I tried to make him see sense that it hurt. And the more we argued, the more self-conscious I became. Maybe he was right. Maybe I was being too dramatic. Everyone else in the family seemed to have moved on, so why could not I... The doubt started to creep in, and I felt myself weakening. It's hard to stand your ground when the person you're fighting with refuses to acknowledge your pain. Eventually, I agreed to help. I don't know why exactly. Maybe it was out of a sense of duty to family, or maybe I just wanted the fighting to stop. But part of me wonders if I was just trying to prove that I wasn't as selfish as he claimed. I've spent hours trying to rebuild my life and be strong for my daughter, and here I was giving in to the very person who tore my world apart. The fight left me emotionally drained, and now I'm stuck in this weird place where I'm helping Mark with his business. Even though I haven't forgiven him, it feels wrong, like I'm betraying myself, but at the same time, maybe this is a step forward in healing. Maybe working together will help us find a common ground and eventually lead to some kind of understanding. Or maybe I'm just fooling myself. Updates number two. Hey guys, so it's been three weeks since I last posted and it's been an absolute roller coaster to say the least. After our fight, I decided to help Mark with his business. Initially, things were going okay. We managed to work together without too much friction, and it seemed like maybe, just maybe, we could find some common ground and move past everything that happened. <laughs> well, for a while, it felt like we were making progress. I was still cautious around Mark, but he was acting professionally, and I started to think that maybe this could be a fresh start. My business was still my main focus, but I was committed to helping Mark, hoping that it would lead to some sort of healing for both of us. But then things started to get weird. Mark began acting suspicious. He was secretive about certain aspects of his business and avoided discussing any long-term plans. I noticed that he was spending a lot of time in meetings without me, which struck me as odd since we were supposed to be working together. Whenever I asked him about it, he would brush it off and give vague answers. 
I tried not to jump to conclusions, but my gut was telling me something was off. It wasn't until one of Mark's business partners reached out to me with my suspicions being confirmed. This partner, Dave, told me that there were rumors going around about Marky Mark. According to Dave, Mark was not only stealing my business ideas, but also trying to sabotage my company. Dave seemed genuinely concerned for me. He explained that he had overheard Mark bragging about how he was using my ideas to get ahead. Mark apparently thought that it was hilarious that I was helping him, all the while he was planning to undermine my business. Hearing this was a punch to the gut. I couldn't believe that everything I did for Mark would stoop this low. This was serious betrayal. Well, in the days that followed, I experienced a variety of emotions. I was angry at Mark for betraying me, but also at myself for being so stupid. I had led him back into my life hoping for peace, but instead, I exposed myself to more pain. As for Mark, I'm still deciding on what to do. I haven't completely cut him out of my life, but I've put up some boundaries, like not sharing my personal secrets anymore, not letting him get cl close at all to my daughter, and just overall not being the same person that he was close to all these years ago. I don't know. I'll update you guys. Update number three. Hey, everybody. So, I'm back. I know it's been two weeks, but here I am. So a few days ago, I ran into an old friend, Rachel, at the local bookstore. Rachel and I used to be really close in high school, but we lost touch over the years. It was one of those random encounters where you're not really expecting to see anyone you know, and then BAM! There they are. We exchanged the usual pleasantries, catching up on what we've been doing with our lives, when Rachel suddenly asked if I wanted to grab a coffee with her. She said that she had something important to tell me, and it just felt really, really urgent. We talked over a nearby coffee shop and found a quiet corner and sat down with our drinks. Well, that's when Rachel dropped the bombshell. She told me that she and Mark used to be close friends for a while. Well, I was shocked to say the least. I had no idea that they even knew each other, let alone close friends. Rachel said that she had been hearing a lot about me from Mark and what she had, well, said was not good. According to Rachel, Mark had been incredibly jealous of my success. She said that he never really needed my help with the business. Instead, his plan was always to use me to steal my ideas and sabotage the whole thing. At first, I wasn't that shocked about it because Dave already told me this. But then Rachel mentioned that he's not only turning everybody against me, he's doing this because he doesn't want me to get successful ever again. So he's basically making sure that I would never climb back up the ladder ever again in my life. Even though he knows I have a young daughter... Rachel had overheard him talking about how easy it was to manipulate me into helping him and how he was using our partnership to get ahead. You know, I mean, all this time he's been interacting with my daughter, playing with her, making her call him uncle, and how he's indirectly ruining her life by trying to ruin mine. I felt betrayed all over again. You know, uh, I just didn't know what to do, really. Uh, all along, his plan was to destroy everything that I put so much effort into creating. I didn't know what to think. Part of me wanted to go along with Rachel's plan. Well, what's Rachel's plan, you might be wondering. Rachel went on to say that she had personally witnessed Mark's manipulation and lies, which is why she was telling me this. At the moment, I was suspicious about why she was telling me this at all, if she was such a close friend of hers. I guess she could see it on my face as well because she told me that she believed he needed to be taught a lesson. Yeah, especially since he was a jerk to her as well and completely ruined her reputation in front of their friends since Rachel rejected going out on a date with him. She also mentioned that simply confronting him would not be enough and that Mark would change his ways unless he was facing these serious consequences. And she was really disappointed in him for the way he's handling things. Well, she suggests that we collect evidence as part of the plan. You know, the idea of getting back at Mark for everything that he has done was tempting. I wanted him to feel the same pain and betrayal that I felt, but another part of me was hesitant. I did not want to stoop to his level. I was worried about the potential fallout. What if our plan backfired? What if it made things even worse? Rachel gave me her word that she would support me at every turn. She even said she knew people who would be willing to expose Mark once we had enough evidence. After our coffee, I went home and thought long and hard about Rachel and what she had said. Well, I'm hoping to move forward. I'll update you. Update number four. 
Hey guys, it's been a week since my last update, and I'm here with an, a whole entire situation at hand. Considering how messed up everything's gotten lately, it's been really hectic. I mean, I don't even have the time to think and spend time with my daughter anymore because I'm busy dealing with everything. So, after everything that happened and uh, thinking long and hard about what I needed to do, I decided to follow Rachel's advice and expose Mark to everybody. The first thing I did was to make sure that I had the evidence, which I gathered through Rachel's conversation with Mark. Screenshots, text, you name it. I started out by reaching out to all of my old clients. I explained everything about Mark and his dirty tricks and how he was not loyal to the business because all of his ideas were built on lies. I didn't stop there. Oh, no. I was just getting started. Next, I made everything public. I exposed Mark and the fraud that he was in front of the entire community of our business, which included our personal clients and different business partners. These and so many companies were part of the business community, and I knew if there was someone who needed to know the truth about Mark, it was them. I let everyone know. Meanwhile, Mark's business was failing. The news of his manipulation spread quickly, and his clients began to abandon him in large numbers. He was desperate to save his reputation, so he made statements, did his best to discredit me, and he even offered massive discounts to lure the customers back. Unfortunately, it was too late. Final Update Hey guys, how are you doing? After everything that happened with Mark three weeks ago and his business tanking and everything, I thought this might finally come down to the last update. Mark must have realized that he could not really get to me anymore. But boy, was I wrong. Apparently, Mark decided that he wasn't really done with me just yet and he wanted revenge. Oh, well, honestly, guys, I have never seen him as furious as he was when he showed up at my home. He started yelling at me, accusing me of straight up ruining his life. Um, I'm saying he started screaming accusations, telling me how selfish I was and how heartless I was to ruin everything. Obviously, it turned into a full-blown argument, and honestly, it was scary, because I did not expect him to be this mad. I thought that this was the one who was at fault here, so, you know, he should not be the one to put the blame on me. But here's the thing, I didn't care. My business was booming and things were going good for me. And on top of that, my boyfriend had just proposed to me and I was on cloud nine. And Mark said that, well, he could bring me down. Uh, I don't care what he said, though. His threats and insults fell empty because I knew I had people who loved me. I'm not sure if I've mentioned before, but I found a boyfriend through all the entire thing. He's a graphic designer and works mostly from home. He's amazing and loves my daughter, and if it had not been for him, all of this would have been so much more difficult for me. I didn't mention him until now because I don't think it was relevant. Guys, Mark must have just gone to realize he wasn't getting to me because he switched tactics. He tried to turn my boyfriend against me. He approached him and tried to convince him that I was mean and selfish, trying to paint him as the villain. It was a desperate move, and honestly, it was pathetic. But, as I said, my boyfriend is amazing. He saw right through Mark's lies and manipulation. Instead of believing Mark's nonsense, he told me everything. We talked about it, and he assured me that he trusted me completely. We decided that we couldn't just let Mark keep harassing us. So, my boyfriend told Mark to stay away. He warned him that if he did not stop, we would file a restraining order against him. And with that, that's really it. It's over.